Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. So I am in the process of bottom balancing a large 1,200 watt hour LifePo4 battery pack. This is a GBS style battery pack. I think it's a Gen 3. It's an LFP 100 amp hour. Anyway, I bought it off of Amazon. I'll have a link down below in the description. So what I'm doing here is I bought a CellPro PowerLab 8. I believe you can see that over here. It comes with these shitty, I don't even know what the name of these connectors are, but they're, uh, they're gendered, right? So like you can only, like you can't put like uh, two female connectors together. I hate that. So these are, these are garbage. I don't like them. I replace everything with Anderson connectors. And for this, I use these 45 watt Anderson connectors. I usually use 30 watt Anderson connectors for just about everything. But since this CellPro PowerLab 8, is capable of uh, slightly higher amperage than my normal projects, I decided to use these 45 watt connectors. And, and plus these 45 watt connectors will crimp onto 10 gauge wire, which is what I'm using right here. And the 30 amp connectors won't. So uh, what I did is I took the battery clamps that came with the CellPro PowerLab 8 and I cut, that's a little warm, I cut the, uh, the ends off of them and I replaced them with Anderson connectors. Yeah, that whole thing's a little warm. Hmm. I think it's okay though. And that way I can have my uh, power meter in line and also, you know, and then, and then that's going to my inverter here. I've got this 300 watt Go Power power inverter. Uh, I like this thing so far. It's a very reliable unit. It's kind of low wattage, but you know, for like 99% of what I do, low wattage is fine. And then I've just, I've got my felt dual E lithium ion battery pack. This is a 400 watt hour battery pack and it was charged up to about two bars. And what I'm doing is I'm charging this up through the inverter uh, from the battery. And so the voltage on the battery right now is about 13.05 volts. When I started, it was at about 13.35 volts. And I think we're just seeing voltage sag from the, uh, from the power drain. But what I'm doing is I'm gonna lower this battery down to 12 volts. And so I'm just putting like a 200 watt load on it. You can see the load, 196, 197, somewhere in there, it goes up to 200 sometimes. And that's just charging up this battery from this battery. And so I'm just putting like a 200 watt load on it and I'm just draining it down. And so I'm gonna check it periodically and make sure that we're not down to 12 volts yet. When I get down to 12 volts, I'm gonna check it, you know, pretty frequently to make sure that I'm not sagging, you know, I'm not sagging down too quickly. When I get down to 12 volts, then I'll switch over to using the CellPro PowerLab 8 to uh, drain the remaining voltage off of the battery in like a programmatic fashion, right? So this thing's computerized, it'll drain each individual cell to the voltage that I want and I'll repeat that procedure a couple of times. I actually made a, uh, a sheet for this procedure and I'll post this at the bottom of the video as well. And so what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm bottom balancing. I'm bottom balancing this LifePo4 battery pack so that I can use it with my solar generator. There are two different options that you can do. You can top balance or bottom balance and bottom balancing seems to be the most reliable, especially with uh, the fact that my midnight solar charge controller doesn't really have like a Life Pro 4 charging profile. So bottom balancing is definitely the way to go, I think. We'll check back in later and we'll see how this works out. All right, so last time we were here, I drained it down to 13.05. I need to go as low as 12 volts, I believe. Uh, I went on vacation in the meantime, so it's been, been about a week. I was using the, uh, the battery pack for my electric bicycle. It's a 400 watt lithium ion power pack. And I just, I realized that uh, I don't bike enough to really drain that enough to uh, do this job. So when I got back, I found this 200 watt incandescent light bulb. So I thought we would just try hooking that up since that's like a constant drain device as long as it's on. Got my inverter here, got my light bulb plugged into my light socket. Cheap ass little, little light socket deal. Turn on the inverter and turn on the light socket. Oh, it might be dead. Yeah, I just saw a flicker. Okay, so I'll, I'll have to find another bulb, but this is my plan so far. 60 watts. All right, uh, let me see if I've got another 60 watt incandescent. 
This one is 150 watt. So with 150 watt and a 60 watt, I'm pretty close to my target 200 wattage. So let's see if this one's burnt out. Nope, that one works, cool. And we can see on the power meter, we're up to, huh, we're up to 162. Um, so the 150 watt is not drawing quite as much as it should be. But I figure that's a pretty good constant draw. And let's see what the power meter is doing. The voltage meter, point this away. Let's see, so we've got, it's showing 12.90 with the voltage sag. So yeah, so I'll just keep checking back like every 15 minutes or so, and uh, we'll wait until this goes down to 12 volts. All right, here we are a few hours later, and we are down below 12 volt. We're at 11.9, so I'm gonna shut off the inverter, and it's going to immediately bounce back up, I think. Yeah, 12.13. I think that's probably fine, though. Whew, I got lucky. <laughs> I, uh, I was making a sandwich and uh, I came down here and it was at like 12.02 or something. And then it went down to 12.01 very quickly. So once it gets down below about 12.6 volts with a 200 watt load or 160 watt load, it starts to drop pretty quickly. So uh, I'm gonna eat my sandwich and then we're gonna move on to the next step, which is uh, hooking up the Power Lab 8 to do an automatic discharge of an individual cell. So right now these are hooked up in series and we're going to, I'm going to disconnect all of this. I'll, I'll film that. I'll disconnect all of these little screws and everything and we'll work on individual cells next.